Hey folks, so this morning I'm going to tidy up a few jobs that I sort of left hanging last uh, last week. One of them being the shelving down here at the bottom section. I need to just run the plane over that and uh, get it tied down. I mean it's fine, it's doing the job, but I'd rather have it complete. Tidy this rack in, this shelving here, get all of the stuff that aren't tools that I'm using daily on the shelving that I have provided and just get the place in order for another week at the unit. Right, I was about to start a project, but the tripod became slightly loose on one of the legs. So I've taken it off, and you get this extruded aluminium bar on the inside, and on one of them it's broke where that screw is, because obviously you're only gonna get so many uses out of this. Bending it backwards and forwards, you can see it's not straight at all. So what I've decided to do, is take this piece here and here's another one strip off all the rubber sections and then just pop it into the vise like that and just tweak the aluminium extrusion to straighten her up a bit like and you can see that's all straight now and then what I'm gonna do this is the one that's damaged is I'll chop I'll chop this damaged end off and when they're all nice and straight like that, I'll cut them all to the same length. These rubber sections just pull off. Yeah, I'll cut them all to the same length. Drill a new hole for this little set screw. And then proceed to put it back together. There she is, completed. Just reattach. Lovely! Right, let's get on with some proper work. I need to make a hook to go on the wall here, in this little dark area, to hang cables and hoses on. Mainly like this kind of cable here, off the welder. So let's crack on. Just a quick change of plan. I'm not going to mount it there because that will actually, that alcove section will fit in one of these shelving units. So once I've got that water pipe out up here, then we'll install that shelving unit there. So I'm going to actually pop it across here next to the window and we'll hang everything up there.
for you technically minded folks out there I bought this pallet truck off eBay a few months ago and when you pump it up it seems to get so far and then just slip so there's no no uh, pressure on the oil if you know what I mean what do you think it is folks I'm putting it out to the hive mind Right, it's approaching half past two. I've spent a lot of time this morning getting everything spick and span and tidy. So all I need to do is pop my batteries back into the bag, grab hold of the camera, get home. I've just got a couple of payments to pay to the real ale stuff, some bottled beers. And we've got to go pick the kids up. It is like Groundhog Day, isn't it? Hello Chucky Poos, do you want yesterday's veggie scraps? Hey, okay. love that. Oh, I love a carrot. We've got the children, and guess where we're going? Swim fix. You got it. So we've just come out to the fabricators. Uh, they've shut the gates apparently because they're so busy. But we'll come back another day or send them an email. Yeah, quick trip to Tesco. Yep. We've not got anything for tea. These want McDonald's, we're not doing McDonald's today. But what we did find was they had some hot dog buns on offer for 16p for six. So we bought three packs of them. And we'll do a cheap hot dog experiment extravaganza taste test extraordinaire when we get home so we bought three different types of tinned hot dog wow that was a mouthful yes and so will the hot dogs be <laughs> <laughs> so we're here we picked up hundreds and hundreds of screws and now it's time to go back home it's almost time to pick Gemma up from work right so we've got 15 minutes to kill before Gemma finishes work. Of course I'm not having a pint. I'm just having a half. Well, that's a generous half, but you know, Gemma's coming, she can drive us home. <laughs> then I may as well give you a little bit of a tour of the brew shed. So across here are our six keg taps. We try and keep on a cider and a lager, and also try and keep them as local as possible. These are two fantastic brews. And we've got a local beer outlawed from Springhead, two crackers there, and the neck oil. The, the neck oil we keep on most of the time as well. The wild beer and the Mercier will probably rotate. And then on the cask side of things, we've got forward, which we generally keep on all the time. A stout, by Pig and Porter, that's the first time we've had that on. Squawk, the Mosaic and Chinook Pale from Manchester, and I think that's the first time we've had Tiny Rebels Beatbox on. So we're running these beers, obviously, until we get our, our beers back on the bar. We've got quite a wide selection of bagging box ciders, which we keep in the cold room. In the back, we've got a fair old selection of spirits and uh, mixers and what have you. We seem to have quite a few gins, that's Stuart's, uh, that's Stuart's forte really. And then the bottle fridge, you can't see very well in there at the minute because it's dark, but we've got wines in there, we've got some cans of beer, Arrogant Bastard, more uh, Magic Rock. Got the Brewdog stuff, we've got some uh, Buxton, 
Thornbridge, some Belgiums down the bottom, Sam Smith's Organic Chocolate Stout, some Gerzers. And also, if you're interested, folks, some cheap nuts. Oh, and yes. Only pub of the season, the autumn. Friggin' right, we did. So, I'm not going to put the lights on because people might think that we're open, but this is pretty much all you've got. It's one room. We can seat about 30 people in here. Some tables that I made. We've got some stuff on the wall that came from Everard's Brewery. This mirror was here when we moved in. Uh, there was one on an opposing wall. We knocked a wall down here uh, because it was a hairdresser's before. See the bar, the back of the bar, we've got the two glycol chillers underneath. One, two. All the pint glasses, halves, wine glasses. Glass washer, which is a bit big for our needs, so we're going to be getting a smaller one. We'll be downsizing with that. Then we have a rubbish bin. We have a bottle recycle bin. We have some crisps and whatnot up there. Pickled eggs, homemade. Some tools on the wall. And then as we go into the back, we've got one toilet, which is just unisex. Heater on the wall. Again, another another big sign that we got from Everard's Brewery when they closed down. And then in the cellar, you can see that we've got casks of beer. There's a couple of spare places there. And then in the corner, we have the kegs, uh, the neck oil, the scrumpy, the outlawed. Then the key keg stuff, which is what you're going to find the Omnipolo and all that kind of jazz on when we get it. And then just a little bit of a storage rack for bits and bobs. An odd farmer's blonde there. And uh, yeah, up here, all the ciders all ready to go. So there you go, that sort of concludes the quick Monday night tour. So Gemma will be here in two minutes and we're going to go home and do a hot dog trial taste test extravaganza, isn't that right buddy? And that's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. Okay, I have quite a lot of footage for today's vlog anyway, but we are going to do one hot dog trial taste test. Yep. So we have the King's Food 8 hot dogs for 50 pence. And then we have Ye Old Oak 8 premium hot dogs for 64 pence. And then Ye Old Oak American Hot Dogs for £1.30. and pence. There are only six of these. There are eight of these and eight of these. So let's see if they stand up to their price tag. Bring on the dog! Right, pass me a can opener, Dom, because we're going to pop open the expensive... They're not so expensive. Premium. And then this one doesn't have a pull tab. So we have to, oh I can smell them. They smell like dogs already. They smell like plop dogs, not hot dogs. Right, let's try the cheapest dogs first, Dom. Okay. We're not gonna heat these up, we're gonna eat these afterwards. But because we don't have much time on the vlog, I'm just gonna get one of the Cheaper dogs, and it is cheap. These are cheap, 50 pence for eight. Let's snap it. There you go, mate. Thanks. Let's dog up. That certainly is dog food. Right, you got that? You're not a fan of that, are you? Not fully, but it's good. It's fine. Right, next is the premium dogs. And yes, I know these are full of like pink slime and stuff. But they're nice. But embrace the slime. <laughs> Here's the next one. This is the Ye Old Oak Premium Dogs at 64 pence. Firmer. Better. More meat. Mm. Definitely meatier. That is way better. And then the final super fast taste test, folks. Is the American style old oak dogs? <laughs> you only get six, but these are considerably chubbier dogs. 
It's a chubby dog. There you go, pal. Uh, it's the same as the premium, but just fatter. I would say the sort of taste like normal ones that you're buying the jar stuff. Yeah. Of. So my my conclusion is your best value for money is the eight premium because it's half the price and you get eight dogs. Shall we cook them up with onions now and eat them proper? I'm not gonna have onions. I'm not gonna have onions. Anyway, there's a bonus, bonus hot dog, bonus hot dog taste test extravaganza extraordinaire. I think that's gonna be enough to end the vlog, isn't it, tonight, buddy? So we'll see you tomorrow and we're gonna cook up some onions. I'm not gonna have any onions. Mm. And finish these off. See you tomorrow, folks. Hi, Abs. Hi,